everybody. It's RPG Grandma. Going to try to do this energy video. Again, I've refilmed it so many times. All right. So this is our role-playing game tips. Maybe you'll love them. Maybe you'll hate them. I don't know. But let's start with the body. Body energy, body language. And here's why, oh, El Capitans. Oh, big cheeses, head honchos of the Dungeon Master Guides. Look, Buck stops with you. You are leading the games. Whether you want to accept that or not, you really need to start owning it. Um, and here's why, all the time I hear all this stuff, players are doing everything wrong, and maybe they are, but you're the one setting out the rules. You're the one setting the parameters. You're the one tolerating things. Often you are guilty of your own, mm, let's say, areas of improvement that you haven't improved upon. You may actually be encouraging the behaviors you don't want at your table. So, one thing in life I've learned is I can't control other people. That's not possible. The only person I can truly control is myself. So, I'm telling you, the only person you can truly control is yourself. However, you can set good examples for others. So, let's talk about some things that happens in role-playing games. We will all recognize. We'll start with our handy-dandy little screen here. Screens, screens it. Being a useful prop, hasn't it? All right. This is pretty typical, right? Um, when you play a role-playing game, when you see them filmed, like if they're filming the table, there'll be a guy. It's usually a guy. <laughs> um, behind the screen. So, and, you know, the players are out here somewhere. Maybe there's some minis. Maybe there isn't. The minis are not important right now. And um, he's talking over the screen. Sometimes it's more like this. Sometimes the angle is a bit different, but this is what you see. This is what you see in real life. <laughs> Sometimes you see this in virtual games, even. Now, right now, I'm talking to you, and you can't see my lips. You can't see what kind of smile I'm really making. You can see my eyes, my eye movements, and all this stuff, but, you know, I've never been able to do the, the independent, you know, that thing. I, I can't, I never figured it out. So, um, this is what you're getting right now. A lot of people, this is what you get. Doesn't matter whether it's an, a more vertical screen or with a more horizontal screen, this is what you're seeing. This is not good you realize like 80 percent of communication between human beings is not um just words 80 percent is body language and then of the 20 percent you need uh voice inflexuations to help and that's why text messaging communications suck well, we have so many arguments on the internet. You're missing 80% of you, over 80% of the communication that you are hardwired as a human being to look for. This screen is cutting off that communication right now. And this isn't even as bad as it can get. I've got, I'm not being monotone, so I'm going to be monotone now. I'm going to pause a lot. I'm going to ask you to roll a dice. Roll a 20-sided dice. What did you get? Let me, let me, let me look here on the chart. Looking on the chart. I'm disappearing, aren't I? <laughs> I'm disappearing. <laughs> You're losing me completely. This isn't good. Role-playing games are about communication. 
they are heavily dependent on communication. All right. Now, I'm not saying screens in and of themselves are bad. I've said that before. They're a tool. We have to be conscious of this tool, how it helps and how it interferes and how you're using it. And if you're misusing it, or if it's even necessary, or if it's necessary. No, not, yes, no. You need to evaluate all that. All right. So you saw this part. Now, if you move it back, you get more information. See? You get more information. You get more of my face. Isn't that better than that? I think it's better. It looks better anyway. Camera. All right. But when I'm like this, even, even if I'm here, once I start dropping my head, I'm looking down here. I'm losing eye contact. My speech teacher from college would be so proud of me. I remember something. <laughs> you need to make eye contact with people. That's part of communication. <sighs> Being able to read lips. Hey, I don't read lips. You probably read more than you realize. And maybe you got players who are deaf or hard of hearing in your group. Our role playing group does. We even have a DM who's deaf. He has to be able to read lips. There's players that need to be able to read lips. Yes, we can do some sign language too. You know, we can always learn new stuff. Turn, turn role playing game into an ASL class, right? But, um, it, it might slow things down a bit, don't you guys think? I, I think so. Um, I've been joking, we need to do a game in ASL. All right, um, so so you, you see, right? This, you lost energy. This, you're gaining energy. Well, what's the main difference that's going on on here? I am sitting up straight. I'm slouching. Slouching. Sitting up straight. So I'm going to close this so you guys can see. Slouching. Not confident. Withdrawn. Low energy. Submissive. That does not help you as a DM. I'm not saying you have to be a jerk. I'm not saying you have to be overbearing. But that definitely is not helping. Okay, you. You yourself. This is where you start taking responsibility for you. And what's going on at your table. Are you encouraging what you want? That's what this... I'm probably going to do several of these about... Um, you have to take responsibility. <laughs> well, you know, so, but you when you stand up, you sit up straight, just like standing up straight. You're, you know, I'm not saying I'm not saying do this. I'm just saying direct confidence. It's a different energy. It sends a different message, body language wise, to all the players at the table. It says you're paying attention. It says you know what you're doing. You don't. You can have all the self-doubt you want in your head. But as long as you're doing this, you're projecting something. All right? And they're going to pick up on that. This is really two basic areas. So if you're using the dungeon screen, <laughs> dungeon master screen, you know, if you can get yourself so where... You're over the screen a little bit more. See how I'm short, so I've got a problem there. I need I need a very small Dungeon Master screen if I use a screen. But you're, you're put on the inside of it somewhere, or uh, I, on sticky notes, over maybe some charts that suck that you don't you're not going to need. Um, sit up straight, make eye contact, describe stuff. Energy, you know, body language, something that's telling you what to do as a reminder. Yeah, you consciously know, but if you've been slouching for 20 years, you're going to have to remind yourself. You're going to, you're going to catch yourself. And if it's too much, don't, don't put too much. Put stuff you can get better at. One thing, two thing, no more than two things. 
Don't overdo it because it'll be too much and you'll be overwhelmed and you're trying to lead a game. All right. And what we're talking about here is changing the energy of the table. So that's the first part. Body language. I'm just going to go for it. Um, well, no, I think I'm going to stop here. I'm going to make another video. We're going to do the next part of the energy at the table and taking responsibility for what you want happening at your table. Okay, so first thing we did was basic body language. How are you presenting yourself to the players? Just by how you're sitting. Are you disappearing behind that screen and turning into a little mouse? How are you going to expect your players not to be little mouses too? You're not leading by example. And people scoff at me when I say that. But I think as you watch these videos, you're going to see what I mean. Is it going to work 100%? No. But this is something you can control. You can control you. You can demonstrate what you want. You can demonstrate what you want. You can demonstrate what you want. Firm. Straightforward. Confident. Energy. Eye contact. Communication. Use your body. Body language counts. Body language can save your life. Being able to read it can save your life. I can tell you right now, me being able to read body language, oh yeah, my job, it can be dangerous. And my job, people can be dangerous. At my job, I have had co -work, I have coworkers who've had their jaws broken. Permanent nerve damage to their eyes. All kinds of things. Broken arms. I am telling you, people did that. And those people weren't necessarily large people. I can tell you that some of those same people who did those things to those people, those co-workers, have not done those things to me because I'm reading body language. And even if they do try to hurt me, I often see it coming sufficiently that I can do something to protect myself from like getting knocked out or whatever. So without having to hurt them. It's important. I can't hurt them. <laughs> so body language, being able to read the other person, being able to send a clear body language message to me, to the other person while I'm talking to them. Being mindful of how I'm talking to them. All that goes a huge difference. Makes a huge, massive difference. That Those developing communication skills in actually communicating with other humans. And getting the results you want, which is not to be punched in the face. Right? In real life. So if it makes that big of a difference in real life, I guarantee you it makes a difference in your role play. So now I'm going to go make the next video on this subject. It will beat the horse. Well, it won't be quite that guy because there's different techniques we're going to get into. So, peace.